All right, thank you for joining us this evening. Everybody enjoying worship? Everything good so far? So far, so good. Yeah, amen. Well, let's pray and we'll jump right into this. Father, we thank you that you are here. We so appreciate your presence. We seek your wisdom tonight. We seek your face. Father, we want to know you more and teach us how that we might Teach us how we might follow hard and walk with you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. um, Eric was at Aberdeen. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And Dan was at Anderson Creek. And I was here. Amen. So so I figured, you know, if we're going to do a follow-up to this week's message that... You know, it's, it's appropriate to have us all three kind of here, I thought. And I had mentioned this weekend that there may be you know, some questions. So we're going to try to get through here quickly enough to we've got a mic on each side. So we're going to go through and answer some of the things that I said we would be answering. And any questions that you have, we want to give an opportunity for us to answer those questions. I would just ask, and I, I, please hear my heart with this. Please reserve it for questions, not, not necessarily long commentary just for the sake of time. I really want to respect the, the folks who are watching our kids. So, and if you're watching online and you have some questions, if you will give that to our moderators, we'll be more than happy to answer those if time permits as well. So y'all ready to jump right into some things? Let's do it. Let's Amen. do it. Um, we, one thing that I said that we were going to discuss was the residual effects of walking closely with God. Again, if you were not here and you missed this past weekend, you're, you may be asking some questions. We were talking about sitting before the Lord, experiencing the presence of God. We talked about the omnipresence of God, which is everywhere all the time, as opposed to the manifest presence of God, which was an, a, a realized or a heightened awareness of God's presence, either in the form of Him manifesting in, in spiritual gifts. And we gave a plethora of different things. If you missed that, you may find yourself at a deficit tonight. I would ask you, please, go back and take a look at that. We don't have time to go through all that again. But let's talk about residual effects of walking closely with God. I've got a few here that are, that are personal to me. Can you guys, residual effects, walking closely with God? Residual effects. Am I on? You're, you're on. He's kind of low. Is that better? Hey. That's better, yeah. Even I can hear me now. All right. I think we simply become closer. I, I think as we um, experience the presence of God, I believe our eyes, this is maybe a little weird, but our eyes become a little more open even as we're reading and studying the word, we, we begin to understand more and we're able to do as we read in scripture and lead not so much onto our, onto our own knowledge, but we begin to understand and there's sort of a wisdom that comes. That's a residual effect. Yeah, there's a scripture that actually says, God, show me your ways. But it, it says, show me your ways that I might walk with you. So you see the mm. intentionality. Mm-hmm. So the intentionality of, of, or the reason for knowing God's ways is that you might walk with him, not in opposition to him, not contrary to him, or in a way that's not conducive. Uh, residual effects, walking closely, having really good communion and good relationship with God is answered prayers. Uh, we talked about that a little bit. One of, the, one of the, the biggest and one of the most obvious for me is the closer I walk with God, it is... I don't, know how to, I don't know how to say this any differently. It is, it is walking closely with God is when we actualize or we realize the joy that it's available in the journey. And, and I'm just going to tell you, if, you're, if your Christian journey or your Christian walk is not full of joy, I would encourage you, please, don't, don't stay in that state of, of mediocrity or joylessness too long. I'm, I'm telling you, there is a place of joy and power and presence with God that he wants us to have. Another one is peace. Um, me personally, the, the, the longer I'm, I'm walking and have walked uh, closely with God, there is a, and when I say peace, there's two words for this, peace and stability. I say all the time, I tell people, I said, the, the measure of maturity is your stability in the face of volatility. D- did you hear that? The measure, the true measure of your maturity is the stability that you have in the face of volatility. Do you guys you agree with that? Is that absolutely? Yeah, yeah I concur with that um, completely. Um, after walking with the Lord for a number of years, you know, you begin to to study and to learn and to grow. And it's when adversity 
comes when something so outside the realm of normal happens, there is this peace and there is this stability that is inexplicable otherwise. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense to those who have never experienced that. Yeah, we had uh, four kids and my wife, I could have, at the time, I did not appreciate what she did, but she would come and she would mark on the wall, freshly painted or not, the height of those kids as they grew. Adversity in our lives is when God comes along and says, okay, let me measure your response to that. Let me, let me <laughs> measure how you grow. So the longer we walk, the closer we walk, the more, the more intimately we walk and grow in our relationship with God. When those, when those temptations or trials, whatever they are, come, think about it this way, even, even in the face of temptation, the longer you've been walking and the more closely that you're walking with God, are the temptations the same? No, no they, they, they diminish. I'm not saying they're not real, but I look very often, and, and you have to be careful if you've been walking with somebody a long time, and I'm not, or walking with God a long time, and I'm not saying that, that we're not prone to it. But at the same time, we, same time we look at people who, who may not have that closeness or, or young believers in Christ and they're struggling with things that it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. It's been a minute. We've learned that we're walking a totally different path. And for a lot of reasons, you're not setting yourself up to become a victim of those temptations. Um, I, I'm, I'm a, a big advocate of, of, um, of leave me not into temptation and deliver me from evil. I believe that God will guide us and help us to walk in ways that are contrary to, to evil. Uh, clarity. Clarity, uh, you know, it, it, uh, walking with God, one of the residual effects is you really see what's going on. And I can only compare it to the quarterback that's been in the NFL for a few years or, or, or from high school to college, and the game kind of slows down. There is no substitute for that intimate personal time that you have with God. You recognize it. You can see what he's doing. You can experience and know the ebbs and flows that are going on in the spirit. If you guys, is that... Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Um, in fact, I mean, and kind of along the same lines, um, the, the more time you spend walking with them, the, the closer you get with them, the, the more immediate the need becomes to reconnect when you realize you're disconnected, when you realize you've, you've drifted. You, from what, what seemed to be so close, as, you're, as, you're mature, as, you're, as your relationship matures, your understanding matures, you realize, hey, I'm this much further, so I need to get closer. I need to come back to him sooner and sooner and sooner. For more and more things, uh, not not things, but you know, topics that we go through in life, whatever those issues may be. And so, as that relationship goes, it's it's understanding and realizing I'm, I'm nothing without him. I want nothing without him, and I can do nothing without him. Yeah, and, and I will say the the walking with God closely, really to me, in my experience, and I think my wife is here. She she would attest to it. It helps us not be surprised. Now, now, sometimes you just do get sideswiped. Okay, sometimes things come along and they come into your life and you had no idea. But I can, I can, I can not even count on my fingers and toes how many times that I would have a discussion with my wife and say, "Baby, something is there's there's a disturbance in the force." Is the terminology that I you ever experienced that? It's like there's a disturbance in the force. I, something is not right. I feel like God is saying, "Look out!" Or either I had a dream and she at one point she's like, "Stop dreaming." Do not, and because I would look, at, I would have these dreams, and I was like, I, I really think God is saying something. Old men shall dream dreams. Listen, God is speaking. Again, we talked about this before. It, are we listening? Is the question. Um, what about guys preparing for His presence? We talked about coming before the Lord and sitting before the Lord. Um, and, and again, it's not exactly what we would we would quantify as prayer. It is prayer because it is it is communion with God, but it's not actively coming and asking and begging God for stuff and intercession and like what we had spoken about. But but how are some ways that you guys have learned to prepare yourself for His presence? Simply getting quiet, um, be, being quiet, being still, and being. Uh, almost habitual, with, without, without creating a, a pattern necessarily of, you know, uh, do this, then do that, you know, in these, this order. It's just being intentional about reserving time and uh, not checking email, not opening an email browser. Turning um, off your phone, or you at go. least turning off the ringer. I, I know that sounds simplistic. I've got the same thing, having a quiet place with minimal distractions. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll I'll add two more things, comfortable and private. 
you know, again, I, I don't know how you respond. And, and I will say this. We have a, a plethora of different personalities and slants and things in here, which means that everybody in here is going to respond potentially a little different to the presence of God. Look at it in worship. In worship, some of you are doing the carry the TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's all right. You can steal TVs. Some of you are doing the touchdown. Hallelujah. You're doing, yeah. you know, mm, mm, you up there. Some of you are shaking your hand at God, you know, kind of thing. And that's good. And then some are sitting like this. And, and don't, don't be fooled. I was talking to Skylar a while back. And I said, Skylar, it's important that as the move of God happens that, that we've got to be old drunks. What, I'm, what I mean by that is, is we have to have been drinking for a while and understand that we can't, we can't just do everything that we feel to do in response to the Holy Spirit's presence. The reason that is is the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. And what we don't want to do as leaders is, is become a distraction to you. Does that make sense? And also, and again, I'm, I'm very reticent to, to really show out emotionally. And, and I do. You'll see me. I'll cry and I'll, I'll get my little, my little white man jig on. And uh, it looks like my hips broke sometime. But, you know, that, that's probably about as animated as I get. But it's probably because it would be embarrassing for me any further. Not that I'm allowing my pride, but, but I have been experiencing the presence of God for a while, but different people will respond in different ways. Turning off the phone, I think what you said, Dan, is huge. Sitting aside you know, some time. When is your time? If you don't have a time, you will probably have no time. I'm, I'm really in that season in my life where I'm going, okay, God, I want to be available. And that may be you. God, I want to be available, whether it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock, whatever. If it's in the evening, I just want to be available. So I'm, 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 I have more and more times. Well, what, is your, what is your time? And listen, guys, and I'm, I'm, we're going to reiterate this in just a moment, but we're not telling you this. We're telling you this experientially so you can look, not so you can imitate necessarily. But having time is important. What, what does your time with God look like? Uh, my time, it's, it's a very quiet time. Uh, it, uh, we're, we're morning people in my house. We uh, have to tell a story to make this work, but we, um, we get up and we're in completely different parts of the house. And we are both surrounded by whatever we study with. And it's just quiet. There's no email. The, the phone doesn't ring that early. The notifications are turned off until an hour after that. Mm. And it's just getting alone with God and getting into his word, I mean, that's, that's a big part of it for me. Rather than me praying and petitioning God for, for anything, I am reading his word and beginning to understand his character and his ways better so that when I hear that voice, I understand it. I know that that's God. I don't have to guess, did that come from God? That is the most incredible benefit to know when it, to be able to differentiate from the spirit, from your flesh, from your soul, from the voice of the enemy, from something that you've heard that's influenced you and then be able to differentiate with the power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. The, one of the most incredible mechanisms for doing that, of course, is the word of God, but the greatest catalyst to understand and recognize God's voice is spending time with him. So you're a morning person. Absolutely. Eric? So Admittedly, I'm pretty new to this, um, uh, so I attempt to do it in the evenings, you know, when everything's calm and it's dark, and uh, I can I can try and relax. the The hardest part to to avoid, really, or the the thing that takes the most, I guess, energy or effort is trying to drown out my own voice in my head, you Oof. know. So, um, I think you would kind of tip me off to, you know, maybe playing a little subtle music that would, you know, kind of drown out. Like, because now it gets so quiet in the closet, I can hear the AC running and it's a distraction, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I think comfort, comfortable is important, right? Because we, we talk about, like, on our knees before God. But if you spend too much time on your knees before God, you, you're going to worry about the pain in your knees or the pain in your back or whatever it may be. So you, you do have to find that, that comfort. And, I, mm. and I'm, I'm playing with that right now between laying, between sitting, um, to where it's easy on the body so I can, I can, I can try and focus here. Um, but at the same time, you have brought up before, and, and it, I know it occurs with me, you know, we can be in the middle of a, a thing, but it's a thing that's shutting out the rest of the world. For instance, you said, you know, you're out working in the yard, right? Or if I'm driving my car, like that's, that's when I feel like I get my downloads. I'm not, I'm, it's not when I'm trying to listen to music, I'm trying to be on the phone, like, Everything else, there's this bubble around me and what I'm doing, and it can drown out other things, and you can receive. So there's not, 
I think it's very important there's not this formula for doing it. We've got to be ready to receive at all times. Um, but, I mean. It really is. You know, I do yard work sometimes. Sometimes. And I need Jesus to do yard work. I need Jesus to get out to do the yard work. And then I need Jesus' help to actually do the yard work. Hallelujah. Come on, guys. Anyway, and, and I will tell you, man, there's been times when I'm just out. I'm raking or blowing with the, doing whatever. And, and God is just it's there. Maybe it's the hum of the lawnmower. Um, so very practical. Again, have a quiet place with minimal distractions, somewhere comfortable and private. You know, I went out, and I was telling my wife the other night, I, I went out, and I was you know, spending some time with God, and it was cold, and I didn't have on the right jacket. And, you know, I, it, was, it was just, and I'm not saying the presence of God is just that volatile, but our attention span as humans, we've been trained to not have attention span that is long at all. So uh, turning off the phone, setting aside time, and one big one for me is preparing my attitude for the presence. And that's what worship does. Worship very often prepares us with an attitude of gratitude to really receive what it is that God has to do for us. So, so guys, it says we enter his courts with thanksgiving, his presence with praise. That's why we have praise and worship. It's not necessarily to bring him here. It's to get our minds off us on him for a few minutes so that he can be magnified and glorified. Uh, Psalm says, I will extol him. That's an interesting word. I will exalt him. In, the, in, the, in my thinking and in my heart and in my, my value system, preparing our attitudes. And this is going to, I know you're going to think I'm strange, but a clock. The reason I have a clock that I usually try to have near me when I'm doing that isn't so I'm looking at the clock. It's just I, I don't want to be in that place of prayer, lose track of time, and then you know, be worried about an appointment. So I, don't, I, so I have a clock. And it's like, okay, well, I can look. I, man, I, I've got an hour. No problem. I've got 30 minutes. I've got, I've got time. I'm not paranoid. You know about anything. I do turn my ringer off. Um, the other one is is having, uh, and, and let's go on to the next one. Tips for making the most of his presence. Now this is this is going to sound absolutely so elementary, but a pen and a paper, uh, for a journal, a Bible, and if you're not proficient with your Bible, a way to look up scripture. Okay, because very often. The, the Holy Spirit will speak to you in terms of tidbits of scriptures, and then you want to come back and look at the context to make sure that you're getting everything that he's saying. So having, like you said, you said you and Dorothy are surrounded by the resources necessary, mm -hmm. and that's huge. That's huge. I mean, there's been so many times that, that in the midst of sitting before the Lord, he has downloaded the catalyst with, to what was either a sermon or an entire sermon series. Yeah, no, I'm in total agreement. And so uh, I will liken it to if... if, if if I'm up here, if I'm working on a sermon for the weekend, it's usually over the course of two weeks where it's it, an immediate download. There's just something that comes in. It's never the whole thing comes at one time. And the best description I have is trying to catch lightning bugs. Like you get an image of it for a second, and then you've got to capture it. And whether that's writing it down for me, it's I have an open sermon notes thing on my cell phone where I just try and, and type it up as much as I can. So if you see me over here typing during a sermon, I'm not texting somebody. I'm usually... Like, man, this is, this is needing to happen right now. Um, so, so capturing that, but then the examining what we thought we received through, you know, like going back into it, like, okay, let me, let me go back to the scripture that, that I thought was just referenced here and make sure I'm interpreting this right and make sure, make sure it does balance it as we filter it through the word. Yeah, because if you hear that and you look and the context is totally different, it'll make you go, hmm. Let me see, was that God again or was that just me remembering a scripture or something like that? Guys, I don't want to hear something. The Bible is very clear. It says there's many voices out there. It says the majority of the prophets are prophesying from their own souls. I don't need a prophylier. I'm not looking to prophylier. I want it, it needs to be the word of God and we are the children of God who should be responsible for making sure that we are hearing from God. It says those who know their God will do exploits. So tips for making the most, very practical, pen and paper or a journal. Uh, Bible and a way to access scripture and have those resources. Uh, Rick Warren said it this way, I know you got a great memory, but the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. And again, I, I know you may go, well, Pastor John, that's nerdy. If it's from God, you'll remember it. Well, the Holy Spirit can bring all things back to your remembrance. I get that. But guys, don't get so super spiritual and, and get kooky and miss out on some good stuff. Um, I will text myself certain things. And the Holy Spirit, I will text it to me so, and, and so that I have a date stamp. On, on when that happens. And you can do that. Just type in your name and it'll come up and you can do it. So the danger of preconceived ideas. I talked Sunday about anticipation versus expectation. 
It's huge. Again, if we come up here and we talk about our experiences and some of the, some of the wild things that God has done in our lives and some of these miracles and, and God moves in you and you have a different gifting or a different personality set and he doesn't do that and you're so focused on that, you're going to miss what contribution God has for you to make, toward, to make to the body. Also, he speaks, again, to us very, very differently. So I, I want to warn you, please watch out for expecting something that you're pr- trying to project on God. Um, and and it, it's huge. You let your ideas be the ideas that flow from the Scripture. You guys got any experiences with trying to recreate something that somebody else experienced? Or are y'all cool and grown? I mean, I, 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 think, I read stories about Wigmore. Much, much earlier in my walk I did, right. you know, uh, because we, we see that and we think, well, that's apparently how it works. How it works. But... After you experience the presence of God, whether, you know, I can honestly say I have never heard an audible voice that I attributed to God. I can say that I've never spoken in tongues. However, I have seen that take place in others, but I'm not trying to recreate what I saw happen with other people. I'm allowing God to do what he does in and through me uh, as, as I'm getting closer to his word, as I'm, as I'm understanding his character. I, I believe I've had dreams that definitely came from, from God right. where right. you wake up with this, this vision and uh, you know, struggle to write it down and then struggle even more to read it in the morning. But Yeah. No. I, you know, I talk to the communicators. We've got, a, I've got some guys we're working with who, who, we're, who, are, who are gifted and God's called them, and I encourage them, you do you. You do you. You know, contrastly, I, I, I have spoken tongues. I do pray in the Holy Spirit. Um, I do not have the gift of interpretation. Um, and so you, you won't hear me do that in public. You'll hear me do that for self-edification. You say, well, I don't agree with that. Read the Bible, and I'm okay with that. I don't have to agree with you on everything. That's fine. Um, a lot of times what you don't believe in, you won't experience. But it may simply be that God has something else for you. And you need to be okay with that. You need to be okay with that. Um, I, I know people who have, who have pretty much wanted the gift of healing, and they would do nothing else, everything else in their life. In fact, I, I knew one gentleman who had, I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but he had the gift of exhortation, um, encouragement. That, that's the word that I would use. He could walk in a room, and, and you could be under a rock, and he could walk in and, and just make you, just build you up through the words of encouragement that he would, that he would give you, but yet he was so focused on this other gifting that, that I think he neglected somewhat that particular. Guys, we don't expect the liver to function the same way as the heart, so this is why I'm bringing this up. This is, this is huge. Have you ever done gift projection or anything like that, Eric? Any issues? No, no not really. Um... Now, I mean, I'll, I'll take any tips and you know from experience from other people, and but everything comes with a grain of salt. It's either going to work for me or it's not. But I'm open to it. Yeah. Most, most things. We have a common chew the hay, spit up, spit out the sticks, or chew the chicken, spit out the bones. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, anyway. All right. <laughs> Depends on who you talk to. All right. The danger of adopting a form versus seeking his face. You touched on that earlier. Can mm-hmm. you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, I can say this uh, on a regular basis. I am reminded of, of the Lord's Prayer. And whether he meant pray these words in this order or whether he didn't, I try to remember to touch each one of those areas, you know, mm. uh, to, to honor God and to seek him about building his kingdom and to ask for and offer forgiveness, all of those things. So rather than, you know, working my way through the Lord's Prayer, which would be form, I instead adopt the, the parts of that prayer, which would be more function. Yeah, you know, I, I must admit, same thing you said, and maybe this is just a, a similarity, but, but I do. I look at those things, God, lead me not into temptation, deliver me from evil. I do say, God, forgive me as I forgive other people. Mm-hmm. That'll keep you straight. I'm just telling you, that will keep you straight. And I will run through that periodically. I've done a lot of teaching and study on that. So when I read, when I go through the Lord's Prayer, it's a little different for me. I'll be honest, but there's a lot of tender spots. Eric, anything? Well, I grew up Catholic, so the first 30 years was word for word, right? (laughs) (laughs) And there there was at least 500 other people in unison, right? Yeah. Um, But no, uh, just just trying to keep, keep the mentality of the prayer, again, just trying to, Keep it in order, too, like always trying to come with thanks first, you know, trying to recognize how much he's already done before I even ask for a thing. But I, I think it's important, though, that when we talk about this, 
the seeking his face, the, I mean, as I told the folks at Aberdeen this weekend, like, don't say a word. Like, if we're talking about, if, you, if, you, if you're waiting on him to show up, you, if you want to hear his voice, you probably got to stop talking first. Good luck. You know? Yeah, no. <laughs> you, 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 guys, this is so easy and so natural. And as far as, as adopting a form, guys, and I'm, I'm speaking to the men as a man, guy, we want to have A, B, and C. We want to have <laughs> one, two, and three. We want this formula that we can just grab onto and work every time. Women seem to, by nature, be a little more organic and relational. Um, it doesn't come that naturally for me. So I have to, I have to be very intentional about, about being personal and being real. We had some ladies on here on the panel a, a few Wednesdays ago, and they got up here, and they just shared. I mean, they were like, just talked. I was like, how do they do that? And they just, it was good. It was rich and, and mm-hmm. substantive. And I was like, can't have any more women up here. They do good. They make us all look bad. Anyway, um, the place of patience in our, and this is the last one and we're going to get into, we'll have a space for questions here. But the place of patience, I want to encourage you to stick with it. Trust that the word is growing and having effect in your life. If you keep coming back, it may not be tomorrow, it may not be the week, it may not be two or three weeks, but maturity is taking place. The same way a seed grows when it's out of sight, when it's covered under the soil, the germination, it's happening. So when you pray, that's why he says, do not lose heart. Until that supernatural thing manifests into the natural, know that God is up to something. Like the song said, he's always working. The word of God is working. It is a seed. Is there will always be seed time and harvest. So the principle is this, that everything you do in the spirit, there, it will residually show up in the natural. Don't expect it to be something that necessarily happens immediately. We do not serve a microwave God, okay? Um, so, again, trust that the word is growing. This is one of the greatest revelations for me because I have seen prayers come to pass years later. And I was like, whoa, You know, do we know that every mountain that has been, do we know for sure that every mountain that has ever been displaced and every tree that ended up in the, in the sea wasn't some Christian at some point testing it out? Hmm. Right? So, I mean, that that could be cool. Transformation is occurring. And I will tell you this, I'll say this and I'll, we'll move on the questions. But when you do something little by little, it lasts. Anything? So, I guess I'll just offer, you know, kind of the place, the place I'm at. What, what this sermon series has done with me is, I, I know the word pretty decent, but not, I, I probably hadn't spent 10 minutes in silence pursuing the Lord probably before mid-January. Mm. And it never really even was a thought. It never was a, a concern. It was, so, let if if you're if you're of a mindset like me if you're if you're new in this walk let the knowledge that you can experience the manifest presence of God in your life let that knowledge grow into desire let that desire grow into pursuit let that pursuit grow into reward be encouraged in that amen very well said yeah and when it comes to patience and prayer you can go all the way back to something we said when we first started talking about keeping a journal you know, if you want to see how much God is doing, write down the things that you are seeking him for and then revisit that. And you will see just how active God is and how responsive. And many times you're going to see that he answered prayers in a way you had no idea that they would be answered. But you recognize that absolutely it was his intervention. I've kept one since 2013. I was a little late to the game when it comes to that. But I got to thinking, I've got kids that are growing up, and when I die, I want to be able to leave them something. I think it's important, guys, that we don't spiritually, they, they get to go from our shoulders, not from our feet. So let, let's give them that, that knowledge of everything that we've learned. We spend all of our lives learning and growing. Let, let's go ahead and find ways that we can hand that off to the next generation so they don't have to start over from scratch. I think many of us in here probably feel like, you know what, we started over from scratch. I didn't, I didn't get a lot of this. I didn't, I didn't get that spiritual legacy from your parents. If you did, praise God. That's a wonderful thing. But you get a spiritual written legacy or something. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm writing this down. But since 2013, when I look back, I'm like, it has been incredible. It dreams that I would write down that I'd had or promises or prayers. And, and I wouldn't even have remembered them to give thanks to God for answering them. Had I not written them down. Mm-hmm. Questions? Have we got any questions? 
don't all rush the mic. Come on up, Philip. Are these mics on, Levi? Okay. Oh. Um, but, yes. Um, I would like to know anything that might help us out with divine intervention. Divine intervention? Yes. Yes. Um, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. God, all throughout history, has, has worked in the affairs of man. Something I was listening to today, and this is huge. Um, Jonah. Jonah. The uh, one, one, do y'all remember Cyrus? Anybody remember Cyrus, the, the, his, the historical Cyrus? Do you know what God called Cyrus? God called Cyrus his anointed. And Cyrus didn't know God. Hmm. So when we talk about divine intervention, God divinely intervened in history through a man that he anointed without that man's knowledge to execute his divine intervention on behalf of Israel to get them out of their 70 years of, of, of prison. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's amazing. So, Philip, I think more often than not, it becomes a, a matter that we don't necessarily recognize just how often divine intervention is occurring. Uh, spending time with God, remember how we said it brings clarity and helping you recognize it? That is what's going on. When we're aware of God, we become very aware of what he's doing and very often how he's, how he's going about doing it. Uh, you know, even what's going on in, in Russia and U Ukraine, there is what's happening in the natural. There's the, the 100,000 spins that different media has put on it. But you do realize God is in there somewhere doing something. Either he's waking up the Ukrainians or he's, he's setting up the Russians for, for this to free that people and get the gospel in there. We are called to walk in a heightened spiritual awareness and know how to pray. And understand what's going on. Guys, it, we, this is where we get maturity. And you don't grow as a child of God without spending... You don't grow correctly as a child of God without spending time in the presence of God. Anybody else? Yes. I was just wondering... I know that we're supposed to have lots of time to pray to God. But... Um, How often are we supposed to pray to God if we need help? And if when we do pray to God, and sometimes he doesn't answer, what are we supposed to do then? You know, Eric talked, uh, had a good teaching on that last week. Um, not immediately is not always no. Jesus had a parable, and this was week five. You ought always pray and not give up. Be instant in season and out of season. I don't believe that's, that's just with our, uh, our speaking about what God's done. I believe it's in our prayer life as well. So one, I think, he said pray without ceasing. What, what is your take on that scripture that says well, pray without ceasing? Well, if we consider ceasing? the fact that prayer is communication with God. Simply. You know, if we are um, staying in communication with God, we're praying all the time. And often we will be in a situation and we'll have an answer that just comes to us. I mean, we think it just comes to us, but that could easily be God's intervention if you are walking with him, if you're experiencing that presence, if you're communing with God on a regular basis. Do, do, you, do you think that God can lead you by your attitude? <laughs> he says he directs the hearts of the leaders. Your heart essentially is your, your mind, your thinking, your attitude. You know, sometimes and you may find yourself, maybe you're a boss at work, maybe you're an employee, maybe you'll have a certain attitude or, listen to this, disposition towards somebody. If you'll, if you'll examine the source of that, I think you'll, you, you'll come to conclusions very, very quickly. God does. He directs our hearts. we walking with them. There's been times when, when, when you have just had overwhelming empathy for somebody. Or my dad used to have an expression. He, God laid you on my heart. Have you ever had that? Where, where you're just driving around and all of a sudden somebody pops into your mind. If, if I pop into your mind, would you please in Jesus' name pray for me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, just from now on, every time you think about me, that is God by the Holy Spirit saying, Pastor Tony needs you and he needs your prayers. And that goes for all of us. And he does. He tells us to pray one for another always. It is prayer, prayer without ceasing. And I, I will tell you, there was a time in my life that I thought, that's crazy. Now there's a time, now in this stage of my life, I, I see that it is not only possible, it is imperative. 
It is not only possible, it is imperative. Any other questions? Somebody, come on up. Mark, were there any questions online? I really appreciate this uh, sermon series, getting a lot out of it. But I want to take a different spin um, um, as it relates to Romans uh, 1, 1825, or Psalm 14, 1. What is the noetic effect of not walking closely to God? <laughs> look around. <laughs> look, at, look, at, look at the newspaper. Look at any of our, our news channels. You know, let, let, let's be honest, guys. There was a season, and I really want you all to chime in this. I don't want to do all the talking here. It's just there's so much that just comes to mind when you say that. I look at what's going on. God is trying to get our attention. We look at it. Our economy is shot. We are, we are experiencing, everybody's going, well, you know what? We'll get through, um, what's that thing called, uh, uh, coronavirus? Oh, we'll get through coronavirus, and then things will get back to normal. Have you noticed that hadn't happened? Have you noticed that it's almost like these things are back to back to back? It's almost like a woman who's going into labor, and the contractions get closer and closer. This is just, just, just think of everything that's going on. Wars, rumors of wars, trumpet blasts going, hey, guys, wake up. All through the Bible, if we looked, we would look at ourselves on this side of Scripture and go, what's wrong with those people? Their economy was shot. Their health was shot. Plagues were hitting. There's volatile. Crime is going through the roof. Lawlessness is everywhere. The church and its power is at an all-time low. Why won't they turn to God? And yet we're just looking at it in such a natural sense, just going, okay. What, what thoughts, guys? Well, as we begin to fall away, and that becomes more a collective experience, um, it's easy to see when you look around that the, the economy, the things that, that Tony's talking about here, these are residual effects of not walking closely with God as we begin to uh, revere God less and less in our culture. And I'm not talking just the American culture. You can take this to the world and look. You can see pockets of revival. But when you see this overarching falling away from God and the effects of that, that's what comes from not walking regularly with God. This, what I'm going to say is hard. But I, you need to catch this. I meant to say this Sunday. I did not say this Sunday. Please listen. Please catch this. Um, it, has, it was so horrible and has become so horrible in a church, in the church context or the Christian context, to look at somebody and say, you've got all this junk going on, your, on in your life because you're living in sin. <gasps> How can you say that, that you've got sin in your life? Jesus said this. You remember there's two instances. and I believe the church needs to strike a balance. Yeah, there's a devil out there to steal, kill, and destroy. But there's sometimes we're, open the, we're opening the door wide. And very often, if you begin to look, there's habitual sin in people's lives who are experiencing junk. Okay, now let me give you a biblical, biblical balance before you get all mad at me. Now what's happened if we went way over here and said, oh, how dare you say you don't have enough faith? How dare you say there's sin in your life? Well, you know what? Jesus said, stop it, lest a worse thing come on you. That, that's a scripture. Now on the other side, let, let's, let's strike a balance. And this is, guys, this is maturity. This is where we got to stop. We can't throw out, the throw out the baby with the bathwater and say, well, everything that's going on in America is not a result of the sinful state of the church and the people in America, because in one indication, it is. But on the other scripture, he said, well, why was this man born blind? Whether, whether it was his mama sinning or his daddy sinning or was it his sinning? So you see the other balance over here. So we take that and go, well, no, don't say somebody's living in sin. But the truth of the matter is there's both, both instances. He says, no, this man's sickness was for the glory of God. But, but listen, it was in his deliverance that the glory of God was manifested. So you see the point. In both those instances, whether it was, it was not his fault and it was to the glory of God, or whether it was their fault, the church and the word of God and the spirit of God should have ascendancy over both. Yet we've made it taboo to say, look, man, I, I know you want healing, but you, you got sin in your life? I'm going to tell you, listen, you will not walk in the, in the available presence of God like he desires you will not experience him if you walk in unrepentant sin. You know, and, and we are, I'm doing a whole series on, on redefining grace, and it's going to be, come up, it's going to be coming up um, in, in the month of um, May. 
And what's happened is we've taken grace and we've turned it into something that God never intended it to be. It, is not, it was never intended for us to, to have grace in our lives to keep us in a place where we are comfortable with sin and compromise. You understand, that was never God's intention for grace. Yet we've, we've turned it into that and we've turned that into a theological teaching. Any other questions? Yes. And guys, I can't see. If you have a question, come on up. Um, so basically, just what, from what we were saying, experiential faith plays a big part in coming into the presence of God, experiencing the presence of God. Correct? Am I right on that? Faith? Yeah, experiential faith. The, wa Exper big, walking with God and trusting in Him makes it easier to come into His presence. Yeah, That's I think, it, yeah. Um, those, everyone who comes to God must first believe that he is. So th it's an incredible catalyst. So when people say, I'm not experiencing it or I don't see this in my life. Now, how many times did Jesus rebuke the disciples for not having faith? <laughs> and, and, and guys, I confess this past weekend, I, did, I, I had gotten to the point that ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened was a theological perspective that I took, not a childlike faith that I walked in. That's mm -hmm. hard. And, and that's what we'll do. Well, how do I feel about the Holy Spirit? Here's my theological slant. Well, well, that's fine. But do you believe it? That's good because if he's not there, it doesn't matter what you believe about it. Right. And if I'm not, so, or, or it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you say or what your doctrine is. You know, please understand what I'm saying. We, we had one more. Very yes, yes, sir. Come on up to the mic. Hey, so, my goodness. Uh, I'm pretty new to this, actually really new to this. Me too. Um, my life's been really dark lately, and uh, I just want to know if I still had time. I know I'm, 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 I'm super new to this. Uh, I just want to, I want to start walking the path. Yeah. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me speak to that. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, brother, I, take, great faith, take great heart, and let me tell you why. Um, I think God is going to do, in fact, it says in the Word of God that in the last days He will do a quick work. Listen, you don't have to meander around in mediocrity and immaturity your entire lives, guys, I'm telling you. In a sense, and, and I would love to hear you guys' feedback on this, in a sense... There's been times that we felt, or I had felt, like, you know what? All right, I got time to mess around. You know what? I can, I can kind of put my, I, I, you know, I wait a few years, and I, I turn around, and boom, I'm 50. Or I'll be 50 this year, and I'm like, whoa. You know, where did time go? I, I don't feel like we've got, we don't, I don't feel like we have the, um, the option of, of walking and dragging around in our mediocrity and immaturity for the next 20 years. Okay, so basically, brother, what I'm telling you is the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Uh, God's no respecter of persons. You seek him with your whole heart, and he will show up with you just like anybody else. And I was making this comparison. The, the disciples walked with Christ three years. Day and night lived with him. They got the same Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost that, the, that those brand new people who just heard that day got, right? Amen. They heard the gospel that day from all over the world, had never heard it instantaneous instantaneous so life change can happen very very quickly uh, but you want it to be deep and consistent so stay stay close just keep walking keep moving guys it comes down to closeness I mean you you mentioned the disciples just three years that they that they walked with Jesus and you know he he taught them and retaught some of the same lessons and as we begin to come closer we can experience that same level of excitement and we can become that the explosion within our circles, which is what they did. That's, that's all that they did. They exploded within their circles, and it exploded to the world just pocket after pocket. Yeah. But it's when we become closer, just like they became close to Jesus and, and began to understand what he was teaching about his Father and about the kingdom of heaven, when we come, come close, when we, when we do the things that we've talked about in the last six or seven weeks, and these become part of our lives, we become closer and we become more excited and we're not putting it off saying, I've got time. We, we don't even think about time because we're so excited to be with God. 
but we need an urgency. How many people in here have been saved more than three years? Raise your hands. Now, come on, don't lie. You've been raised more than three years. You should be apostles by now. (laughs) They got three years. Some of you in here have been saved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. In three years, God God said, all right, you know enough. Now I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and go do it. I was talking to a young man. He might even be in here. I I, I don't know. But I was talking to a young man, and and, and he was talking about learning and getting knowledge. And I said, said, do you realize? I said, do you know the gospel? He said, absolutely. I said, then you know enough to save the world. Will you take it and will you do something with it? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to use you and send you? Guys, we don't have to be theologians. Not one of those guys in 12 years were theologians, yet they were writing the theology that we study. Think about that. Good. I mean, God wants to use us. How available, how available are we relationally to him Hmm. will, will determine how fruitful we'll be for him in our walk. Any other questions? Anybody else? I'll just jump in on that real quick. I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll remind you of something you, you said a couple of years ago, and that is you, you have the relationship with God that you're, that you're okay with, that you want. Mm-hmm. A God that's omnipresent makes himself readily available, his word readily available. You have, we have, the relationship we're okay with. And you may say that's not true. Well, if you wanted a more, more of a relationship, you would pursue seek more of a relationship so and that's a hard saying i remember saying that boy he's got a good memory i gotta be careful what i say but it's true you have the relationship that you want and it doesn't mean doesn't mean that it's not growing because you may say i want a growing relationship and you'll have that experientially you will guys we want to pray thank you for your patience thank you for your time thank you guys for coming thank you let's pray We'll get out of here, Father. We just don't want to miss out on anything that you have for us, Daddy. God, from from that person here tonight who is just learning you and just taking those baby steps by faith in the Spirit to that person, God, that's been saved for a hundred years, God, I'm asking you right now to pour out your Spirit in the form of a hunger and a desire and a renewed passion for you. Holy Spirit of the living God, I'm asking you to convict us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. God, let us not be comfortable in a place of sin or complacency. God, I'm asking you, God, for revival in your church. I'm asking you, God, for for conviction. I'm asking you, God, for your presence among your people. I thank you, Father, that you are here, not only here, but you'll be with us when we get in the car. You'll be with us when we lay in our beds tonight and when we awake tomorrow because you are faithful, God. Give us the grace to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. Look forward to seeing you this weekend.